It's Cherry. Hey, I just want to take a couple seconds and talk to you about pneumothorax. Um, I was a paramedic, perhaps even for a long time, before I realized what truly was the difference between a simple pneumothorax and a tension pneumothorax. Uh, I think it's really important that you know the difference because when you know the difference, you'll know how to treat your patient. So let's talk about that real quick for a second. Um, okay, the simple pneumothorax, it's fairly easy to understand. For whatever reason, um, we have a lung that has been punctured and we've got air moving out of the lung into the chest cavity. And once that air gets in the chest cavity, it becomes trapped. It doesn't have a way out. And so the lung can't inflate because there's air outside that's taking up that space. So it causes that lung to stay collapsed. Okay, I, I think that's a fairly easy concept to grasp. Okay, some causes of those types of injuries um, can be broken ribs that puncture through the lung wall. So it could be uh, caused generally from trauma that that happens. Could be a penetrating injury into the chest cavity causing what we typically see, um, we we'll call a sucking chest wound. Now, those penetrating injuries don't have to happen just in the front of the chest. They could happen in the back. They could happen in the armpits. Um, anywhere that when that penetrating projectile moves into the chest cavity is going to cause what we call a sucking chest wound. Okay, And um, those things can cause a pneumothorax. Typically, those types of injuries don't turn into tensions, and we'll talk about that in a second. The third reason that we would get a pneumothorax would be a spontaneous pneumo, and that is simply that the patient is overexerting, overworking their lungs, and, and they have a weak spot and they puncture. The patients that are at risk for that are very tall, thin, athletic males, and we see those injuries happen when they're exerting themselves, playing basketball, uh, running, doing things that are going to uh, create a lot of um, expansion and work in the lung area. Okay, Signs and symptoms that we would see on a patient that does have a pneumothorax. Um, we're going to see, we're going to hear chest, we're going to see chest pain. Okay, Oftentimes they complain of shoulder pain, that their shoulder hurts really bad. Um, they may complain of some shortness of breath. As the pneumothorax continues, we may start to see less chest rise on one side of the chest versus the other. Um, once our patient has lost about 30% of their lung capacity, we can start to hear diminished lung sounds. Uh, we're not going to hear much diminished lung sounds until we've lost about 30% of that capacity, which I was surprised to learn that. Um, you at some point will start to see decreasing uh, pulse oximetry numbers. Um, to compensate, our patients are going to have an increased heart rate and an increased respiratory rate trying to compensate for that lack of oxygen. So the obvious treatment for the open sucking chest wound um, is going to be to A, put your gloved hand over it. So this is any injury in the upper chest, the upper back, or the axillary, that armpit area in which we're going to have an, an opening into the chest cavity itself. So put your gloved hand on it as soon as you find it. The more air that gets sucked into that chest, the worse our patient is going to do. So plug the hole with your hand and then get an occlusive dressing. You see here from the pictures that um, the commercially made ones, the round one, has a little flap on the top, which air can go out, but it can't go in. It's kind of a one-way flap. Uh, if you don't have anything fancy like that, that's okay. Grab a piece of cellophane. Grab, uh, I know they make Vaseline gauze. I find those a little hard to tape to a chest because they're so gooey and sticky. Um, but typically, you could use the wrapper off of the Vaseline gauze, a piece of tin foil, anything that air can't permeate, and tape it on three sides. That's going to allow the air to escape under that open side, but it won't allow air to get sucked in. Okay, So we want to put the occlusive dressing on, provide oxygen if needed, and 
And, uh, you know, if we can, if we've got that open wound, air has a way to escape. That is a good thing. We'll talk about that in a second. If you don't have an open wound to the chest, you need to get ALS in route as quickly as you can, or you need to get headed to the hospital as quickly as you can. So let's talk about positive pressure ventilation. Okay. This gets really dangerous. Now we have been trained that if our patient is not ventilating adequately, we need to ventilate for them. And in almost every case that's true, except this one. If we put positive pressure in the lungs, we're gonna push more air to the outside of the lung, and it's gonna make that area of trapped air bigger, which is gonna collapse our lung further and make our problem worse. So with these patients, we're gonna provide lots of extra oxygen. We're going to do everything we can to help them compensate through this. And we're gonna reserve that positive pressure ventilation for those patients that truly, truly need it. Because there's a very good chance we're gonna make this situation worse. So if we have to breathe for these patients with the BVM, okay, it's very gentle. It's very slow and it is small amounts. We want to see, barely see that chest start to rise on the unaffected side. Once we see that, we've got enough. If we get real aggressive and our adrenaline is flowing and we're going to provide big breaths or too rapid of breaths for this patient, we will very likely kill them and uh, create a situation that they can't survive. So let's not make this worse. Um, step back and think, why is my patient not ventilating adequately? Why are they hypoxic? Why are they showing these signs and symptoms? And if it's because of a pneumothorax, you need to understand that it is the excessive pressure in the chest that's causing it. Us putting more pressure in the chest isn't going to fix it. Does that make sense? Okay, so a tension pneumothorax is when that pressure builds. So this is going to happen with a closed chest injury, like maybe the rib that punctured through the lung, but we don't have any opening in the chest. Or it can happen in, in an injury that has an open chest wound and we've put a dressing on it, but it's not properly vented. Okay, so if we would tape on all four sides or if something would happen and that that hole has gotten clogged with something and air can't get out, now we run the risk of running a tension pneumothorax. Okay. The hallmark sign of a tension pneumothorax is the lowering blood pressure. So when we start to see uh, a tension pneumothorax or a simple pneumothorax, you're going to see that blood pressure start to rise because of the increased heart rate um, and the vasoconstriction that happens when our body tries to compensate for the lower oxygen levels. But once we start to see that lowering blood pressure, that's your key, that's your red flag that said we have moved to a tension pneumothorax. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to open up that chest and let that trapped air out. And we're going to talk about why that causes an issue. So there's two ways we can open up the chest. Okay, if we have an occlusive dressing on there, we can vent it, we can burp it, we can get the air out that way. If we have a closed chest injury, then we're going to have to put a large needle into the chest, and this is going to be an ALS skill in most states, um, a large needle into the chest to let that trapped air have a way to get out. It's called a che uh, chest decompression. Um, it's a paramedic skill. If you take him to the ER, uh, they will probably follow that up with a chest tube for sure. Okay, so I'm going to show you this video. Um, this is the video from the inside of the chest that's going to show you the needle coming in. You can see it in the picture here. The needle coming into the chest cavity. Now down at the bottom, watch, there's going to be a lung there that's trying to breathe. As we put in that needle with that white plastic catheter on it, then they're going to remove the needle and we'll just have that simple little thin plastic catheter 
but it's going to be a way for air to get out of the chest. Um, watch what happens to the lung at the bottom of the screen. So there's our chest cavity. It's got a big pocket of air in it. The needle is coming into that pocket of air. You can see the lung at the bottom. It's trying to breathe. It's trying to inflate. The needle comes out of the catheter. And watch this lung now. Yay. It's starting to inflate. Starting to have enough room as we move the air out of the chest through that little canal. That lung can now inflate and do what it's been supposed to do all along. Okay, simple little maneuver, um, absolutely is life saving. Hold on, I gotta figure if I can figure out how to. Okay, so a tension pneumothorax is simply a collapsed lung that doesn't have any way for the air to get out. And so as more air exits the lung into the chest cavity, that pressure continues to build and build and build. You'll, you'll see here on this picture, over in this area, we've got air either being sucked in through the chest um, or leaving the lung and coming into the chest. Now, as that pressure starts to build, if we don't have any way of getting it out, it's literally going to start building so much pressure that it's going to start shifting all of those structures, the trachea, it's going to start compressing the heart, and when it compresses the heart, the heart can't expand and fill. Two things is going to happen. We can't pump as much blood if we can't fill full. But the second thing is our heart compresses best, our contractions are the best when those ventricles stretch. So if we don't get that stretch, then our contractions are going to be kind of puny. So our cardiac output is going to go down. The other thing that's going to start to happen. The vena cava sits right between the lungs. So we've got our lungs here and our spine. The vena cava sits right in the middle. So as that pressure in that chest cavity starts to expand, it's going to compress that vena cava. And once that happens, now we are limiting or maybe even blocking the blood flow to the heart. So if we don't have a supply of blood going into the heart, then we don't have any output coming out of the heart. So, because of that, that increased pressure in the chest can be fatal. It's going to compress our heart. It's going to keep the heart from pumping. It's going to compress the vena cava. And if it collapses that vena cava, we've just cut off the pipeline to the heart. We have no more blood flow. Both of those are going to, at the very least, reduce the blood pressure. Um, if it gets worse, it can um, almost like drop the blood pressure beyond the point that it's functioning at all. So how does that translate to our patient? Okay. Our job as EMTs and paramedics is to recognize when our patient is not getting adequate perfusion. Okay, We call that term hypoperfusion or shock. Basically it means that we are not getting oxygen to the cells that need it. Okay, It's important that you know that. A tension pneumothorax lowers that blood pressure. Okay? Without an adequate blood pressure we cannot move the oxygen around to the cells. So without a blood pressure we can't get perfusion. And if we don't have perfusion our patient will die. Okay, so that hyperperfusion or shock will kill our patient. It's going to start with that extra pressure in the chest. Okay. So as a wrap up, any simple pneumothorax can become a tension pneumo under the right conditions. Okay, so if it's a closed chest injury, we absolutely run the risk of this becoming a tension pneumothorax if it's not fixed quickly. Okay, a spontaneous pneumothorax is also a closed chest. And so we can uh, run the risk of that becoming a tension pneumo very quickly. Okay? Or if we have an occlusive dressing that's put on an open chest wound and not properly vented or if that wound kind of seals off. Okay? 
Tension pneumothorax is life-threatening. The hallmark sign of that injury transitioning from a simple pneumothorax to a tension pneumo is when that blood pressure starts to take that downward trend. Now, if we don't fix it, that'll continue to plummet, and that would be our life-threatening issue. So the treatment, when we see that happening, when we when we're recognizing the signs of a tension pneumo, is either a needle decompression into the chest or a chest tube. Okay? I just thought I wanted to share that with you because I think it's important that you know about the injury so you know how to treat it because ventilating these patients with the BVM can be very dangerous. I hope that helped. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.